gentle people so today is 26th of April it is Friday and right now I am in the little courtyard of the uh, it's where the art museum and the science museum is American Airlines Arena is off to that side and there are the big ships behind me and the art museum is right here just left the art museum oh yesterday I was at work right and um, I I don't even remember how I came across Beatrice Gonzalez and her work so I was online doing some research about her looking up some videos and then I put her name in Google and I saw some links to some videos pop up and then one of them said the Pam and I'm like the Pam that's like right in my neighborhood and they actually have a retrospective of her work right now 60 years of her work here which I just saw a while ago which is like I don't know life is so funny to me it's like one minute I'm researching this woman and I'm looking at all her artwork online trying to imagine what the the scope and the scale of it is and then the next minute boom I'm here and I get to see it which is like crazy because she's like a Colombian artist right uh, if you are in Miami close to Miami definitely take the time to come down to the Palm I always make a point to come when they change the exhibits because it's one of my favorite places in Miami but anyway let me get to the meat of the matter yesterday I made a post on Instagram the night before I pretty much deleted all the photographs that I have on there and this is just like a general breakdown of my social media philosophy right hold on one sec yeah I have struggled with social media for a hot minute meaning it's not the place where I felt the most comfortable because I'm not like I don't have like a big personality and I think um, social media is one of those places where people with big personalities shine and I tend to be a lot more unassuming so like this constant like putting yourself on blast all the time uh, it made me very uncomfortable and back in 2007 is when I had initially got on social media so I signed up for Facebook and I signed up for Twitter both of them in 2007 and in 2010 like I used to be on Facebook all the time and then in 2010 I deactivated my Facebook account because uh, like even wow that was like nine years ago even nine years ago I just kind of didn't really like the direction that it was headed in so I had deactivated the account but I didn't delete it and then back in 2014 when me and Kyle were in China I had reactivated it just so I'd be able to like keep in touch but then as soon as I got back I ended up deleting it and um, Twitter so I had still been on Twitter I was like a hardcore heavy duty user of Twitter like that was Twitter was my ends right and then last year I think around August might have been the last tweet and it wasn't like a conscious decision I had been kind of working my way up to it because I think at the time I probably had like 20 some thousand tweets which is nuts and I was trying to delete all of them or trying to find like some kind of service that would allow me to, de to, to delete the tweets and it just was not working so I was like you know what I'm gonna just put my account on private and I just stopped tweeting and this is coming from you know tweeting several times throughout the day I just stopped like literally cold turkey so Twitter was last year but the thing that I was not able to let go of was Instagram because I'm such a visual person and I don't know if I've talked about it on any of my videos before but I have this thing called aphantasia and you might be familiar with synesthesia where people like see um, colors when they hear certain sounds and that type of thing aphantasia um, is, is not similar but it kind of kind of works the same way in terms of you know people who have it like our brains just operate differently in the same way that people with synesthesia do so what aphantasia means for me is that I'm not able to store mental images in my head I don't have any visual imagery up there and people are like oh my goodness you're an artist but you can't picture anything and 
you know, I realize that people kind of conflate imagination and creativity with uh, the visual and that's not true because even though I can not hold images in my head and I shouldn't even say hold I just don't have them there at all so it's like if you're in front of me and it's like I will remember that you know your hair was a certain way or I'll remember like you had on a certain type of clothing and certain colors but I won't be able to recreate a picture of that in my head it's just impossible for me so that was one of the reasons why I held on to Instagram for so long because even the posts that I made, they were kind of like a visual reminder for me. It's like it helps to kind of jog my memory. Oh, there is what I was and that's what I was doing. And, you know, then seeing all the stuff that people would post. But inevitably, the thing that comes with being on these platforms is you get sucked in. And then you get sucked into the point where you were not even aware that you're in it. And, you know, I honestly don't think social media started off with any nefarious or insidious um, intents or anything like that. But that's the way the monster has kind of grown throughout the years, right? And I, I love social media. I believe that if you it properly as a tool it can be advantageous but what I realized was that I felt like I was the tool instead of using the tools and what that meant is the constant picking up of my phone the filling of all the spaces in between the gaps of time um, whereas you know before I used to pick up a book that I was reading or I would sketch something or a doodle or I just allow my mind to wander and I stopped doing that um, not all the way through but pretty much nowhere near as much as I used to and I stopped doing that because of social media because like the phone is right there right every time you see somebody they're literally in their phone and I was very conscious of that because I tend to analyze things in this very meta way like why am I thinking about this and why am I doing this and I don't know if like I've had this meditation practice for over 20 years now so I tend to kind of step back and look at what it is that I'm doing and how it is affecting like this little small version of myself and I wasn't comfortable with it at all and you know I wasn't one of those people that really cared about likes and followers like those things weren't important to me but what I would do all the time is you know I'd just be scrolling scrolling looking at stuff looking at artwork and then you know what inevitably comes to that you're like comparing yourself to other artists and that Ooh, people do not compare yourself to people on the internet don't do it do not do it um, the way that these algorithms are created is based on the same techniques that they use in the gambling industry and they're designed to activate the, the parts of our brain that make us uh, psychologically crave certain things, right? It's like every time you pick up the phone and it's not even about likes, it's just picking up your phone and getting a dopamine rush from a dopamine hit from seeing something. Oh, I have a new follower, I have a like, I have a comment, oh there's something new to look at. That dopamine rush is literally like pulling the thing on the slot machine so it constantly keeps us in this weird feedback loop and then after a while you're not even aware of it anymore and it's pretty much you know when I'm online and I'm posting stuff sometimes I feel like I'm in like this echo chamber it's just <sighs> our lives have become very bizarre because of it and like I said it, it it is a tool and if you're using it as a tool especially for like business purposes I totally get that but I think where when it's at the point where it starts to affect your mental health and it's causing anxiety and because you're comparing yourself to people all the time and oh my goodness look at these influencers living these amazing lives and you know I can't live up to that or I can't look like that and oh let me tell you the one that gets to me black don't crack I know our melanin is a wonderful thing but if I were to go off my explore page alone I would believe that black women do not age and a lot of these black don't crack posts are with these celebrities who have access to the Botox and the, the what is it the 
Breton Lane. I don't even know what these things are called. These people have access to plastic surgeons and uh, 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 this whole cadre of people that cater to them and make them look absolutely beautiful. So as a black woman, when you know, you're know you seeing all of these freaking posts about black don't crack and you know that you don't have access to all of the things that these people have at their disposal, it's like, no, I'm like, I already came into this with some self-esteem issues. This is just not going to help the situation. All right, and black, black, it might not crack, but it, it bends and it folds and it has sags and all of that stuff. So don't even buy into that hype. Another thing as a black woman that my ex work page can irk to me with is that if I were to work off of that alone, like being a single black woman in America is this awful thing because I don't have somebody making like some kind of grand proposal to me. Um, I'm not... We call those baby announcements when people are like exploding things with these colors like what i'm basically saying is like if you click on a couple things here and there like the algorithms basically assume that these are the things that you're interested in sometimes i click on things purely out of accident like shit i didn't mean to click on that but then my whole explore page becomes this thing that i have absolutely no interest in if thought about it when I was driving down here and I feel like if Instagram didn't have likes followers and the explore page I'd be cool with it personally um, or if Instagram was something that you could pay for like it would be a subscription service and no I become the customer and the advertising dollars or the advertising companies aren't the, the customer then I'd feel more comfortable with that because like I said so I don't think social media is the issue I think it's the advertising companies and the dollars that are kind of behind the machine that are causing the issues because what it does is it creates this system where like they're not exploiting us for our money because we're not paying for these free services but we're being exploited for our time we're being exploited for our attention and you know one of the things i mentioned in the post yesterday was like we're being exploited for our boredom boredom is a good thing i remember when my son was little and he used to complain about being bored and i was like good bored is good because that's where the ideas come from if you don't have some kind of boredom and space and silence in your life there's nowhere for the creative energy to come through it's just not going to happen and being on the phones constantly doesn't give you that space to be creative I know I'm looking like I don't even know where I'm looking at this point in time because I turned the phone upside down by accident but anyway um, the other thing too is like oh this YouTube channel I've been on YouTube for what since this is like four something years now I've never made a dollar on YouTube and I was watching a video with a photographer named Sean Tuck or is it Sean Tucker he's really amazing um, and he was talking about the fact that when he was at a hundred thousand subscribers he would he would have made enough money to maybe pay for groceries for the month that's a hundred thousand subscribers I do even have a fraction of a percentage of that so you know people have this idea in their head that oh they're going to make a living through social media you you can't bet on this and the percentage of people that are creating these amazing influencer lives is this very teeny tiny upper echelon of like it is not something that is feasible or attainable for every single person and i'm not saying it's impossible because nothing is but like you know there needs to be like a hard dose of reality inside there because the other day um on youtube well not the other day but like sometime last year it's called adpocalypse is what people were referring to because like advertisers weren't happy with some of the ads that their videos the videos that their ads were playing on so they got strict with the algorithms at google and like a lot of people's videos started getting demonetized all of my videos got demonetized not like i was making any money from any of them anyway but even just the option to have that now is completely gone and I I wasn't making crazy videos I make videos about art and craft and talk about normal stuff like this so it is impossible for me I think I don't even know how many thousands of followers I need well subscribers I need to have at this point in time to be able to get my videos monetized again but it doesn't matter like 
if I was betting on YouTube, like YouTube is not going to put a roof over your head, neither is Instagram or is Facebook or Twitter. No, those things can be a part of a business model that puts a roof over your head, but you can't put all your eggs in like the social media basket because at the end of the day, you don't have any control over it. If one of these platforms crashes and your business is solely reliant on that, there it goes. That's the end of your story. Um, so when I deleted everything yesterday, like I was like, I'm going to go back to like this very old school, you know, just do a simple newsletter and send things out about, you know, just what um the things that I would normally put on social media anyway. What I'm watching, what I'm reading, what I'm listening to, like you know, the photographs of the artwork. Um, I took when I was inside the museum today just the things that I'm generally interested in because one of the other things that had started to happen to me was I'm an artist I'm a visual artist and if you pay attention to all of the social media experts everything is about a brand right because we live in this twisted world where corporations are people and people are brands and in order to create this idea of a brand on Instagram you're supposed to you know everything is supposed to be curated and you're supposed to only post pictures of the artwork and anything related like and I bought into that nonsense for a hot minute and you know like that's a huge part of who I am the art and the creativity but it's not all who I am like I am a total science nerd obsessed with quantum physics and just anything having to do with science like I read science journals like their books and you know peer-reviewed journals and scientific articles and that type of stuff I know total nerd stuff but like I never felt like Instagram was the place where I could talk about any of those things you know every now and then I would post stuff about my computer science and my coding stuff but I never felt like Instagram was the place for that you know what I mean so there's that and I'm gonna hurry up so I can get this video done the next piece of it is if you have a gazillion followers or if you have a gazillion subscribers it doesn't mean anything because here's here's the realization that hit me right I love to inspire people I love to empower people I love to teach but if you feel that all of these people are sitting there waiting for the pearls of wisdom to drop from your mouth or you know to appear on the screen that's not what the situation is you know you know how all of these um channels that you're subscribed to or all of these people that you follow you're not paying attention to all of that and even on instagram because the algorithm is constantly changing you're not even seeing the stuff for the people that you follow a lot of the times and none of us have any control over that and that's what the issue is and like i said if it was something where we were the customers and we exerted some kind of influence on the way the, their, their whole business model is structured then that would make more sense to me but we have we exert no influence like we're just the 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 mechanism that fuels the machine it's almost like in the matrix when <laughs> i know i'm going there it's almost like in the matrix where like the humans were what were used to, oh my goodness the humans were what were used to power the machine that's exactly what this shit is hmm um <laughs> yeah i need to unpack that like <laughs> i need to think about that for a bit because i never thought about it until i just said it you know um machines are tools and they can't function without the humans who operate them and like the minute that you start to feel like you're the tool and not operating the tool then that becomes an issue so oh yeah going back to the whole follower thing so I don't have lots of followers and subscribers but for those of you who are here I love you thank you so much you you know we cool like that right um but the deal is this if i were to stop posting videos which i have at different times or if i were to stop posting on instagram literally out of the 1600 plus people and almost 2000 people here on youtube maybe i might hear from three four five people yesterday when i put the post up that you know i wasn't going to be on instagram anymore like i can count the amount of people 
that sent me a message or something on these hands so the other thing too is like I'm just at the stage where I feel like if I don't know your first and your last name I don't know what you look like and I've never engaged with you it's like what is even the point anymore you know what I mean it's well as far as like taking advice and that type of stuff from people is concerned um, I miss being bored and I miss having real deep proper connections with people and I'm just over feeling like a tool being used to feed the machine and I'm not saying I'm never going to get back on Instagram I know I'm not going to the Facebook again unless I have to do it as a part of a job or work or something I'm totally okay with that same thing with Twitter if I have to do Facebook and Twitter for a job or you know as a part of my career wherever I'm working I'm totally cool with that but personally I'm not getting back on Facebook like I've been on Facebook for nine years so I don't see where I'd even know how to operate that thing Twitter I love Twitter so I could see myself getting back on Twitter and Instagram I love Instagram as well so I could see myself getting back on Instagram too but the thing about it is I need the time away to really assess and you know re-examine how I engage with these platforms and you know when I feel like I'm in a space where I can move forward um, using them as tools and not being a tool then I'll probably hop back on but for now I'm gonna just take the time to chill and read my books and listen to my music and be bored like I used to I never even started using Instagram I was on it on 2014 but I didn't even really start using it until 2016 and you know I know this world moves at lightning speed I love technology technology is my jam um, but at the same time you know remember that we're the ones who power the machine so that is it people um, I am starving I need to get something to eat and then I need to head home and get on I-95 which sucks but anyway this video is long if you've made it to the end as always thank you for your time your energy your presence you know I appreciate you you know I love you even though I have no idea who you are back there <laughs> um, but some of you I do know like in real life so that's pretty cool so um I'll still be posting videos and stuff um, if you want to sign up for my newsletter which is just going to be the same stuff I'm really sharing on social media um, the link to my newsletter is going to be you know the deal down in the comments box below so I will talk to you soon peace